Hello everyone and welcome to your 94th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about the invalidating property wrapper introduced in macOS 12 Monterey. So I'm just going to run you quickly through the, the setup that I've done for this project but feel free to either download the code from my GitHub page or you can create your own as you go at home. The new Cocoa project that I have here is targeting Mac OS 12. It needs to be at least 12 or greater to use this feature, so may as well set it to be that. The view controller is being assigned to our Windows content view controller in the app delegate. This is what our view controller property, or sorry, view controller class looks like. It's got three properties. There's the invalidating view uh, property. Then there are two different ones, which are a color well and an NS button, which is just a checkbox. And the setup is pretty simple. We're just assigning values to the invalidating view, and we're matching those values with the color well and the checkbox. And then when the color well or the checkbox are changed, there are actions to reflect that to change the invalidating views properties as a result. The nib file looks like this. Again, there's a color well, a checkbox, and an invalidating view, which I'll talk about in just a bit. Um, but basically, this is just my uh, subclass of NSView that I call invalidating view. So you'll want to change your uh, NSView custom class to whatever you call this invalidating view thing here. All right, so let's talk about the fun that we want to talk about in this tutorial, which is the invalidating property wrapper. So so far in this invalidating view, we are not really doing things correctly. And what I mean by that is that we have two different properties here. One is a background color and one is the is big bool. Their values are going to affect the, the appearance of this view. So we can see here I'm opting into wanting an update layer and in my update layer pass, I'm taking the background color and assigning it to my layers background color and then the intrinsic content size of this view, which is the uh, standard size that it will appear on screen if you don't have uh, you know, constraints that will override that, then uh, this is defined here. And this, the is big bool value will determine whether I am a big view or a small view. So let's go ahead and just run this application as it is, and I will show you that nothing will change as uh, I update these values, but we can see that I have this color well, right? My invalidating view is here and it doesn't get changed. And if I hit the checkbox, it doesn't get changed as well. Again, as we would expect because these properties aren't really doing anything. So let's change that aspect here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to say on did set, we will say that we need display if we change the background color. Uh, sorry, I meant to say true here. And then if our bool value is changed, we want to invalidate our intrinsic content size. All right, let's go ahead and run this. And as we've written it, this should give me the correct behavior that I expect. So here's my color well. If I change the color, we can see that our invalidating, invalidating view is reflecting that. And if I change the checkbox, we can see that the intrinsic content size of the view is reflected there as well. So perfect, it works as expected. But that's not what this tutorial is about. We wanna learn about this invalidating property wrapper thing. And how does it work? Well, I can delete that code that I just wrote there and I can just say at invalidating with the thing that I want to invalidate, which in this case is my intrinsic content size. And to demo this with the is big checkbox, we can see that it still works. So awesome. Now let's take a little bit of a dive into uh, this invalidating property wrapper because it does a couple things and it's kind of an interesting uh, little addition. So it looks a little complicated. There's a lot of public initializers, but the reason for this is that you can actually initialize and validating with uh, many things. You can, um, let's say I also wanted to change, uh, you know, I want to set needs display, then I also uh, need to say needs layout. I could pass all three of these things and when is big is changed, it will trigger all three of these things to be invalidated effectively, right? So that's um, 
a nice thing that we have, but that's really the reason for all these, you know, lo lots of large public initializer things that we have over here. The kind of main components here, though, are really at the top where we have invalidating, and the two generic values we have are value and invalidation type, where value is going to be our wrapped value that is uh, this is just a standard uh, Swift property wrapper ism, and I know I haven't done a Swift property wrapper tutorial, probably will at some point, but you can look it up online if you want to you know, get all the details there. But basically, uh, this is the wrap value, which in our case is this, uh, you know, is big bool or background color. That is the wrapped value for our property wrapper. But the way that this property wrapper is defined is that this value needs to conform to equatable. You might be wondering, well, why does it need to conform to equatable? There was nothing really in this implementation that you know required us to, con you know, equate two values. Well, the invalidating property wrapper does a little bit more than just what we did here, which is that it also compares the value before and after to see if anything actually changed. And if nothing changes, it's not actually going to uh, perform the action. So. Really what it's doing is something a little bit more intelligent, which would look something like this, where it would say, is the old value different than the new value, which is our background color? And if the value changed, then and only then will we trigger our needs display, right? So there, there is a little bit more smarts um, to this invalidating property wrapper. And uh, that's how this one looks here. Um, so let's hop back over uh, to this uh, just for a second. So that was the value, pretty clear, just needs to be equatable. That's the only real requirement for it. The second part is all of our invalidation types, right? So that's what this guy is. It's a invalidation type. And it is something that conforms to NS view invalidating. And this is a kind of an interesting little protocol. It just has one method, which is invalidate. And basically, AppKit defines just various things that are uh, NSView invalidating. So there are, is a NSView invalidations display type, and we can see all these different types, right? There's a display one, a layout, constraints, right? And they basically just all conform to NSView uh, invalidating, and basically they will invalidate uh, those aspects. So there's one called display, one called layout, and basically the way these work are that they're just mapping to existing NSView calls, right? So display maps to needs display equals true, or sets set to be true. Uh, this would be set to uh, needs layout, uh, needs update constraints, or whatever that calls is. Uh, this would be invalidate intrinsic content size. You get the idea, right? But basically, uh, AppKit just defines a bunch of these particular types, and presumably that's what it does behind the scenes, right? I don't really know what the implementation is, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it does something along those lines. All right, so now that we know that, we could replace all of our code here. Uh, and let's go ahead and copy this guy. And on this one, we wanted to call set needs display uh, to be true. And so let's just validate that making this change actually does what we expect. So here's our, um, so let's just see, we have our is big uh, checkbox. We've got our, our color well here, and we can see that as a uh, change this, we are also changing the colors of our views, right? So it works as we expect it to work, which is great. Now, um, of course, on this channel, I never like to keep things short. And so let's uh, dive into one other kind of interesting aspect of it as well, which is that um, you can kind of extend this invalidating protocol yourself as well. So as we were looking at this before, uh, I noted that there is this, you know, display type and there's this layout type, and they're all kind of just defined in this NSView invalidations enum, um, which is kind of cool, right? And um, there's no real reason that you can't use this as well, but I just want to show you how you could actually use uh, this idea and make your own invalidation types, which, you know, I don't really know if there's a real use case for this, but let's imagine that we had one, uh, we'll just call it printy. And all that printy is gonna do is it's going to just print something every time it's called. Um, again, 
probably kind of useless, but you are, uh, so again, this invalidate call comes from the NSView invalidating protocol. It's the only method that we really have to implement on this thing. And so, um, and with that, I don't actually think I need to have this as well. Um, but basically, right every time our invalidate is called, we're going to be passed in the, the current state of the view that we have for invalidation. We could use uh, different aspects of this, right? We, we could use anything that we wanted to do on this view. Uh, we could trigger that in this invalidate call. Presumably what, you know, the display one is doing is just calling, you know, it's doing a comparison and calling uh, needs display, right? I'm not sure exactly what it does, but you get the idea. But for our little example, let's say that we just want to call hello, right? So uh, now that I've defined one of these NSView invalidating things, I could say printy, right? I'm just passing another uh, NSView invalidating type along. And we could see here that uh, if I blow this thing up, right? Uh, this was on our, our is big property. Let me hide that, right? So if on our is big, every time I trigger a change here, I should get the fact that uh, we have a new uh, a call to hello being made, right? So kind of an interesting uh, little way that you could expand this yourself. If you wanted to have uh, this have sort of a, a nice dot syntax like this, you really just have to define it uh, the same way they define it in here. So we could just say an extension on NSView invalidating where self is printy. Right, and we will make one that's called printy. It will give back a printy, and it will make a printy, right? <laughs> you get the idea. And so if I wanted, I could even drop this and use my handy dandy little static var that I have here, and it would work the same way. And now I have just a little printer every time I uh, go to trigger <laughs> my, my value. Again, not really sure that this is useful in any way, but um, it's. I just found it kind of interesting to know that you can uh, extend this invalidating functionality if you, for some reason, had something else that you wanted to invalidate. Again, I can't really think of a great uh, use case off the top of my head other than the ones that AppKit already defines for you for updating your views. But anyway, what what is uh, a fun... Apple programming tutorial without a random uh, side information that you probably don't need to know about. Anyway, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you guys next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.